have to ask the obvious question. Yes. You you decided to take the family. Now, let's let's paint the picture here, okay? Mom, dad, two teenagers, three dogs, and there's Thelma. <laughs> and uh, let's talk about Thelma because that's that's <laughs> that's where you are. Yep, that's uh that's where we we reside. That's correct. And we um we we got Thelma. Uh, we picked her up back in the middle of last year, and it was quite a um, a journey from acquisition to, to Thelma sort of coming to life. But uh, she she's a pretty cool cool old bus. So tell me, describe it to me. What uh, what are we talking about with Thelma? How big is this? So Thelma's yeah, she's a forty foot Monaco diplomat. <clears throat> So Monaco Diplomat's a really high-quality bus, but she's 2002 vintage, so she's just under 20 years old. Uh, when we picked her up, you know, she was water damaged. She had um, a, a lot of little, you know, bugs, and, and I, don't, I don't mean literally. Uh, well, actually, a few literally. <laughs> but uh, she, needed, she needed a lot of work and a lot of TLC, and uh, so my wife and my daughter transformed transform the beige interior into multicolored we call it the hippie bus but it's just a really delightful blend of, of fresh colors and and you know a lighter take on on the oak background you know and uh she she has a, a queen suite in the back where we live and, and there's a pop out so that's that's where we we sleep but we put in two bunks for the kids, and those bunks are again in a in a pop out, so it extends out, and um, they've each got sort of a curtained off area. Which their major quip is, you know, we'd love to have a door, but uh, you know, that's that's not logical in this configuration. But they they love their little spaces, and they've they've turned them into their own spaces. A little bit of art, a little bit of memorabilia from the trip thus far. Well, what what led you to the decision to move out of your home in Charlottesville, Virginia? Not only move out, but sell your home and decide that Thelma was where you needed to be and hit the road. Uh, why? why? It's a, it's a great question, Bill. We um, you know, we had we were on a journey, and and collectively the family, and the COVID sort of crisis hit. Everybody's hunkered down. And the kids are, you know, stressed. They, they don't have access to their friends. There's not a lot of community around. They're sort of facing the same blank walls every day. Uh, they were really struggling in that environment. And um, we had, I built this home back in 2002, 2003. And, you know, we had a great attachment to it. But to be honest, um, we, we felt constrained we felt like we were stuck in this place where it was a lovely community but there was so much more to be explored and Yana one day said why don't we get an RV and and travel with the kids and see some of this you know the US and I'm like that'd be great and that evolved into selling the house and moving into the RV full-time which that transition, you know, it's a, it's a it's a big transition mentally, let alone physically. Oh yeah. Um, it it sort of took a little while for the kids to not even come on board. They they loved the idea from the outset, but to really wrap their heads around what this meant. And to be honest, Bill, it was an experiment. Um, we felt like there may be somewhere else in the U.S. we'd like to live, so we wanted to look around. We felt there was an opportunity to travel to warmer climes, you know, as sort of COVID ramped up over the winter. Um, and it also gave us the flexibility to go to less COVID prevalent places. It gave us the ability to sort of look at the map and go, oh, my goodness, it looks like, you know, this area is pretty safe. Uh, and the exploration of the national parks, it, I've got to say it grew on us. So probably over two or three months, it became evident that what we'd done was actually transformative for our family. It's amazing. Uh, Grant Gamble's our guest. Grant and the family living and traveling in an RV they call Thelma, very affectionately. Uh, what were some of the uh, maybe the toughest things about this? I, I imagine living in close quarters at home 
with your teenagers and your pets is one thing, but when you constrict that to just a 40-foot RV, uh, it's got to cause some challenges socially. Uh, so what were some of the things that you had to get over to be able to get along? It's a, that's a great question, Bill, and, and that's the truth. Um, you're suddenly in this 40-foot capsule. So we go from a house where everybody is, you know, three levels. There's actually an apartment on the property. You could, you know, the kids would stay over there sometimes. There's a lot of privacy, a lot of opportunity to, you know, have your own space. Um, yeah, we really needed to, to adapt to that, to sort of those close confines. Um, and I think with the kids, you know, their curtains will and, and still do get drawn often for them when they need a bit of space. Um, the kids, you know, I call them kids, they're actually young adults. They, um, they'll often take time by themselves uh, where one will walk back to the bus if we're off doing something and, and spend some time and just have some space. Um, but really, we needed to become more patient with each other. We need to, I, I think it increased our appreciation of each other and what we do. I mean, they'd see Yana or I prepping food or, you know, getting groceries and, and they would pitch in, but it really made it more evident what went into running a household because, you know, you're not behind your, your wooden door. You're actually, you're buried in it whether you like it or not. Um, so I think it was, has been transformative in developing appreciation for each one of us. Uh, even Yana and I of the kids, it's become a, a transformation for us getting much closer to them honestly rather than it pushing us apart it's actually drawn us much closer well grant have you two two quick questions to kind of wrap up on and one of those are you still on the road are you still traveling we are so currently we're on um in the baja or at the bottom of the bar which is you know baja uh, oh, yeah. california sir yeah. it's um a place called los Brilles. Uh, it's a beautiful, quaint little village. Uh, we're on the beach. We're in an RV park, literally beachfront. Uh, we've been here about three weeks, probably staying here another four weeks. There's almost zero COVID here, and it's warm. We're working on a project. The kids can do school here. We've got you know, a great place to go and get Wi-Fi. Uh, so it's, it's going to be sort of our winter sojourn here and then we're going to hit the road again and head north we're going to head up through the northwest oh excellent so uh how long do you in- intend on doing this do you know originally bill we thought six to twelve months uh it's probably going to be somewhere in between that uh i think probably the summer uh we'd like to have the kids settled back into a school rhythm particularly if schools are back in person we'd like to have have them back in school you know for the new school year so that's probably our driver um, you know, there's talk right now for us to maybe zip across to Hawaii, but we're not sure we'll take the bus with us. <laughs> hey, is Thelma waterproof? Can you can you float her? <laughs> Man, you know, look, I've actually seen an amphibian RV um, advertised, but it's a little little beyond our budget, and, and we'd have to put pretty big floaties on Thelma. Yeah, you'd think so. Uh, I would think so. So if you, it, it, when you put down roots, let's not say if, when you put down roots again, and even if it's just temporarily – uh, you said you wanted to find maybe a new place to live, and granted that Charlottesville is a wonderful place, but it does get cold, and it uh, the, the weather cannot be so conducive to being outside. Where do you think you might land? Do you know? You know, we don't have firm a firm fix on that. It, what's been revealing, Bill, over the trip is places that we thought would be wonderful to live. We've gone, oh, maybe not. Or other places we weren't so enamored with sort of came up in our estimations. But we're thinking maybe the Pacific Northwest or maybe uh, Hawaii uh, is a, you know, a, a pretty solid bet. But we'd like to experience that for a few months before committing to that. Wow. Well, I can imagine you've seen some pretty great countryside and where you are right now. I'd love to be there on the beach with you because that, that would be perfect for me. I'm that, I'm that kind of guy. I, would, I wouldn't leave the sand in the sun <laughs> if I had the opportunity. But this is a great, yeah. great story. Now, you folks are documenting this. You're on social. How do we find out how the Gamble family and Thelma are traversing this great country? So, um, yeah, it's called gamblefamilyadventures.com. So it's a website. Mm-hmm. My wife updates it. She, she does really the lion's share of the work on it. Some great photos on there, great anecdotes. We keep it up to date pretty much um, on a, on a weekly basis, so folks can go there and check it out. We're also on Instagram and uh, Facebook, but um, but the website's a great place. If somebody wanted to 
sort of maybe entertain this idea for themselves, it'd be a great place to get some some feedback on that and and sort of look at some of the you know, the upside and the downside of of it. It's not all paradise, but man, it's a beautiful day down here in Baja right now. I, I can't say that we're complaining about the weather. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I imagine not. I imagine not. Well, Grant, best to you and the rest of the family. This is a fantastic story. I envy you, my friend, just picking up and going. That is great. Maybe one day, maybe one day we'll do that in our household as well. I'd love to be able to just hit the road and do that. In the meantime, I'm stuck in a studio, but I'm not complaining. I'm loving it because I get to meet people like you. Be well, be safe, and we'll follow your story. Thanks, Bill. Great to talk with you. And Yana says hi as well. Hi, Yana. Hey. Hi. <laughs> ah, there she is. Okay, All very right. good. Take care. Good to hear from All you. Right. Bye.